Welcome back to Sailor Space, the Engineers and Navigators Hub. There is always a new content waiting for your view every week, as promised. So before we continue, if you have not liked or subscribed to this channel yet, please like it, subscribe, click on the notification bell so you receive notification whenever a new video is being dropped. Today we are going to be discussing on a very important topic that has to do generally with engineering and the maritime sector. We are going to be talking about thermal fluid heaters or boilers. So if you want to check majority of the vessels, especially tankers, large container ships, cruise ships, require lots and lots of use for steam that they use for heating water or heating heavy fuel oil or whichever process lubricating oil etc but we find out that these processes can also be done and achieved through other systems that are more safer easier to use and less expensive than our normal day-to-day -day steam boiler so that's why i'm bringing up this topic to your knowledge the thermal fluid boilers i know most people are not really familiar with, with, with this but they actually exist okay so a special shout out to engineer if you john for helping me with the pictures on board his container ship they actually use the thermal fluid boilers as a matter of fact so stay with me don't go anywhere let's dive into the meaning of thermal fluid boilers the components in them how they are used the advantages and also if at all it has any advantages we are going to check all of those in today's lecture once again if you have not subscribed to this channel please subscribe click on the like button so that this video can reach a whole lot of viewers and at the end of this video if you find it informative educative or interesting do well to comment i would really love to hear your comments and share it thank you so an overview of the system a thermal fluid heater or boiler is an equipment used to transfer heat with a reasonable low pressure it uses thermal fluid such as glycol or thermal oil and this thermal fluid are circulated in the system to achieve the heat transfer for the desired process in this type of system the process is controllable and also allow for accurate temperature regulation since the heat supply is an indirect heat they are basically low pressure system so the heat from the system does not really pressurize the system heavily and you can actually really control the temperature that you get out of the system mostly these systems can be run on a constant pressure so if you want to really imagine how a thermal fluid boiler works you can use um, a quick brother or sister of the boiler community that's the fire tube boiler it's more like the fire tube boiler that has um, the fires in the tube with water surrounding it to produce the steam. But this time around, the thermal system makes use of helical coils. Helical coils that are wounded, constructed in the system that carries the heat. Then the heat is now transmitted to the thermal fluid, which is the glycol or thermal oil as previously said a thermal fluid heater or boiler um, uses an array of helical coils that generates heat energy from combustion now during the combustion process the thermal fluid is heated up and they carry the heat in which they have gained through combustion to the desired fluid for example if i want to heat up my AV foil oil or lubricating oil system instead of me producing steam like in the normal boiler when I heat up my thermal fluid example the glycol the glycol is now circulated around my heavy foil oil or lubricating oil piping system and transfers the heat in which it has to the heavy oil system 
in which heating it now after it transfers this heat to the system it now returns back to the um, thermal fluid heater and the cycle continues so it now shows that this thermal fluid heater or boiler is a closed cycle not like the conventional steam boilers that are more like open um a open circuit since you can do blow down and the water can be topped up or removed entirely okay so you agree with me that for every system to work effectively there are certain components certain parts that are used for this running so that's bringing us to the basic components of a thermal fluid boiler or heater there are a lot of components but we are going to talk only on the basic one that will ensure effective running so the first component to talk about today is the pump so the pump are used to transfer the fluid throughout the system the pump controls the velocity the movement of the fluid and also the pressure in the system during the pump construction there are so many things that needs to be considered there are so many things that needs to be put in place because a normal high pressure pump that is being used in um in other system can cannot be used in this particular system because this system has to do with low pressure so and high temperature so rather a kind of pump that is actually befitting to it to use has to be used mostly it is recommended that the pumps to be used are the air cooled mechanical seal pumps or the water cold pumps there are other kind of pumps that are actually used the second component is the valve eventually when fluids are to be transferred there have to be a control process to allow the fluid in to allow the fluid out and all those regulations so that's where the valves comes in the valve controls the flow of the fluid in and out of the system for this particular construction since it has to do with very high temperature the construction of the valve has to be very strong and it has to be leak proof for adequate control to take place so the bellow type seal valves are recommended for the thermal fluid boiler system to ensure they are fully closed against the different material that are being used and also when a, when the system gets aged it also helps withstand the wears that develop in the material with time. Okay, the next component is the burners. So you agree with me that for anything heating or production of heat, we must have a source of ignition. We must have what produces it. So the burners are the source of ignition for this system to bring about combustion so the burners provide the heat energy necessary to raise the temperature of the thermal fluid before it is being pumped through the system in which it is to be used so the burner helps to keep up with the size and the power demand so the next component i'll be discussing today is the control panels this system has control panels for its control the control panel provides an interactive interface between the operator and the system. This is achieved through a set of um, programmable logic system, fondly or no, uh, majorly called as the PLC in short. So these packages are inbuilt to the system and this control panel is an interface in which the operator uses this PLC to interact with the system for your optimum control. So the Control panel also provides useful information for its operation. Information such as the following can be gotten from the control panel, although it is not limited to the, the ones I'm going to call out. You can um, control how the you can determine the burner running as how long has it been running, so you know maintenance procedure according to recommendation from the manufacturer. You can also it also shows has a temperature controller. Which shows the current temperature at which the thermal fluid heater has been raised to to enhance the temperature in which the operator wants to get at the end of the operation then the third one it shows the burner mode is the burner on 
is it off is it on partial load is it on automatic so it's it he it has a fan um, an option for that also then if you have an option for the amperage of the preheater burner to the amperage as a current that goes since um, a cylinder valve ignites the burner so that means electric connect current that ignites the burner so we have to know the amperage the current in the system so it also shows if the preheater is on or off it shows the normal operation mode and the harbor operation mode that that one is functional if you are maneuvering and if you are put if you are at maneuvering or if you are at sea you want to use the normal mode or if you are put you don't really have use for it you use the harbor mode so the panel also has a test button for testing dude it also has a reset button to reset safety protocols in the plc it has a lot of light indication that shows either of this aforementioned is on or off to ensure effective running of the entire system So I've talked about um, the overview, the component. So now I want to see why should we use thermal fluid boilers? Why should people consider using thermal fluid boilers? Its advantages over the steam boilers. So the first advantage is there is no risk of corrosion or freezing in this particular system. Reason being that the thermal oil contain um, organic organic materials and its freezing point is quite lower than that of water so it will not freeze easily as water will so um, that's why it is being used and when there is no risk of corrosion you agree with me that the idea of chemical inhibitors and chemical injections into the system will be rolled out leading us to where we have less cost overall cost of the system will be reduced because there will be no need to buy chemicals and all of those stuff so the construction is rather simpler because a boy a standard boiler has lots of components that ensure safety of both the operator and the entire system but in this type of um, system, since it has to be low pressure and the risk of explosions are actually very low. So its construction is not as expensive as that of the boiler. We don't have blow downs because it's a closed system. We don't have steam traps and the problem associated with failures of steam traps because the system is uh, does not use steam and the problem of condensed return system and contamination this all leads to the cost effectiveness of the system and safe cost for the operator so we go to the maintenance the maintenance is reduced actually because of the pressure the pressure is reduced so we will not be thinking of um, retubing because um, the, the tubes have corroded or we will not think of explosion because the pressure are quite low or the usual annual pressure vessel inspection or the unhook gasket replacement water treatment all of those stuff that are necessary in the steam boilers are really not necessary in the thermal boilers so the next one we have um high operating temperature you can actually get a whole lot of temperature with this kind of system and with a very considerable low pressure which makes the system very unique so the the thermal fuel boiler can also be in a vapor phase or in a liquid phase so there is another aspect that is very important it has less for consumption whenever you do blow downs and another uh, maintenance you get to find out that the heat will drop there will be a reduction in thermal efficiency of the steam boiler so that will mean that more fuel has to be burnt by the furnace to by the burner to give more heat 
to create more steam as if the water is now not in a very high temperature so you see that more fuel more cost more maintenance which is actually not a problem with the thermal fluid so in conclusion a standard thermal fluid heating system can cover a temperature range of 32 to 650 degree fahrenheit which is an equivalent of 0 to 343 degree c as compared to that of a steam standard steam system which covers about 250 to 350 degree fahrenheit with an equivalence of 121 to 177 degree c and for the thermal fluid heating system has a pressure between the range of 50 to 75 psi so you can see that it's quite low as compared to that of steam of about 120 psi so you can see that the pressure is quite really really low so for this week's section um this is where we'll draw the cutting as i bid you farewell um next week stay tuned visit sailor space as there is always a lot of educative content weekly from different aspects question and answers for job interview test CES, Marlene's normal lectures, normal teaching on engine components and there is just a whole lot to learn. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Until next time, remember to subscribe. If this video is educative, if this video is informative, if you've liked, if you like to watch something like this next time, Click on the subscription button, like this video, spread the news, share it, comment. I would really love to hear what you think. And also, I would li like to hear your idea concerning the thermal fluid boilers.